Every other item in my newsfeed the last few weeks seems to have been about AI, so I thought I might as well jump on the bandwagon. But don't worry, this isn't another video about ChatGPT. The technology I'm going to look at today is one that is well established and built right into Microsoft Power Platform. It's called AI Builder. AI Builder is a set of no to low configuration tools accessible directly from within Power Platform that let you easily access many of the capabilities of Azure Cognitive Services. Deploying AI services in Azure can be done fairly simply for some workloads, but AI Builder really minimizes that work by allowing you to use models that have already been trained for particular common business purposes. So I have three examples I'm going to walk through in Power Apps to show you how AI Builder can work. So accessing AI Builder in Power Apps is really straightforward. Here I've got a text recognizer component from AI Builder, and I can add one of these to my canvas simply by going up to insert and inserting one of the AI Builder components. And you can see that I've got business card reader, receipt processor, form processor, object detector, and text recognizer components. Now that isn't all there is from AI Builder. And you'll see in one of these examples that I'm using features in AI Builder that aren't actually a component in Power Apps by going through and using them in Power Automate instead. But we'll get to that in a moment. So I've got a text recognizer component here. Um, and all I've got is a text box here, which shows me the results from the text recognizer component. So let's jump in and see what this could do. So I'm going to add a new image. And I've got a Microsoft sign here. And you can see that very quickly, it identifies the text on the picture and shows you all that text is in this text box here. So let's try one more. And you can see I've got this sign here and um, I've got the text, it identifies all the areas. So this is kind of a general, like if you're familiar with OCR, optical character recognition capabilities that you might have in some kind of document scanning process, this is an easy way that you can get these into your Power App instead. But there are more specific capabilities as well. So another capability is this one called Receipt Processor. And it's a very similar entry to uh, the one that we just saw. But what this does is it's specifically built, it's a model that's built on receipts and is designed to extract data from your receipts. Uh, and you can see here, I've got some text boxes for, um, I get a property called Merchant Name, I get a property called Merchant Address transaction day, I get a total, and then I've got a gallery over here where I'm looking at a table that I get of purchased items, and then each item could go into my gallery. So let's just see how this works. So this is just an example receipt that I downloaded from a Google image search, and you can see that we get the merchant name, the merchant address, the transaction date and then in our gallery these items you can see which items were identified here so if you have a process in your company where people for example need to upload their receipts to do with their expenses and you want to automatically work out what's in those expense receipts then the receipt recognizer component can help you to do that so jumping into the last example here, we have an example of sentiment analysis. And when we looked at those um, components that are available from AI Builder previously, you can see that there isn't one for sentiment analysis. So the way that this works actually is that I have a text box here and when I click on my analyze button, I'm actually calling a flow for Power Automate. So if we jump over and take a look at that flow, you can see that I'm grabbing some data from Power Apps. And then in flow, I just have this action of analyze positive or negative sentiment in text. And then from that, I get back um, whether it's a positive uh, sentiment and what the scores are for positive, neutral, and negative. And so for all of the different capabilities of AI Builder, whether they are ones that have a component in Power Apps or are something that you could use in Power Automate, by connecting Power Apps to Power Automate, you can use that capability. So let's jump back and just take a look at this. So I've created some uh, demo reviews for a fictitious hotel, and we will see 
how this works. So I'm just going to paste in my text. The hotel wasn't really uh, as good as the last time I stayed. The rooms need to be updated. I will not be visiting again. And I click analyze. And you can see this person wasn't very happy. So I get this, uh, this red negative face here. So let's try another one. This is a bit more straightforward. We really enjoyed our stay. The highlight was the food in the restaurant. So let's analyze that. Oh yeah, that's a big smiley face, a green, because uh, they had a good review. And let's try one that's a little bit more on the fence. Everything was okay. We wouldn't be against visiting again, but the hotel wasn't really located in an area we'd want to visit again soon. Let's see what it has to say about that. Yeah, this is a bit of a, a neutral review because they thought it was okay, but we certainly haven't got a customer for life here. So you can imagine that you could use this uh, sentiment analysis uh, option if you were doing something like getting review um, feedback coming in from your customers or you were getting tweets on Twitter and wanted to highlight the ones that were either particularly positive or particularly negative. So now we've looked at those three examples, let's talk a little about AI Builder generally. So it's a paid add-on on your Power Platform licensing, um, or it can be added on to the free Power Platform that you get as part of your Microsoft 365 subscription as well. And there is a free trial that you can get inside Power Platform, um, that, whether from Power Automate or from Power Apps, that'll let you play around with it. And I certainly recommend that you do that. And you can see that there's lots of options here that we haven't explored today. And all of these options are really leveraging capabilities that you have within Azure Cognitive Services. You can see here there's um, options that align with what you saw in AI Builder and uh, a lot more as well. And AI Builder is just really a friendly way of accessing the capabilities in Azure Cognitive Services. Um, but it's worthwhile understanding Azure Cognitive Services also because you can call Azure Cognitive Services from Power Automate. And depending on how much you're going to use these services, actually using um, Azure and the consumption-based pricing in Azure can be a lot cheaper for you than opting to add on the AI Builder license into your Power Platform environment. So um, just be aware that there are both options there. Azure can be a little bit more complicated to get set up, but there's some really good learning materials that are available through the, uh, the Microsoft Learn website to get you started with that. So throughout this video, I've talked a couple of times about models. And I think it's important just to delve into that a little bit. As you saw on the um, AI Builder page, there were some items where you were using a predefined model and there are others where you were able to create a custom model. So what does this really mean in the context of using AI? Well, the AI services available to, for us to use, whether they're the ones that you're seeing in AI Builder or ones that are getting all the attention like ChatGPT, aren't really generally intelligent in the same way you would think of a person being intelligent. They're essentially taught to do things by exposing them to data that's relevant to that task. So for example, the receipt processor that we talked about earlier will have been exposed to or trained on lots and lots of images of a, on a variety of receipts. And the more that it sees, the more it understands the patterns of how they're constructed and the better it gets at recognizing their data. However, this data set or model that the receipt recognizer uses to do its job would be useless if you put it up against another task like doing what ChatGPT does, as all you would have is lots and lots of videos on YouTube of an AI talking about receipts. So the more focused the training, the better it can be at doing a particular job. In that case, it's just kind of like a human employee. If you train them better, then they'll be do better at doing their job. Um, and this is why you might want to focus in on more specialist models. Like we talked about, if you have a particular form, you might want to train a model with that particular form you could use the general text recognizer model to 
work out what the form is saying, but you're going to be able to get more out of it and it's going to be better if you use your own customized template data to train a model to do that particular task. So understanding what the model that you're using is trained to do and what data it was trained on is essential, particularly when you get into more sophisticated use cases where a particular focus in the training data could unintentionally introduce bias in the results you're getting. Think of that sentiment analysis example. Like if that was trained on a set of data that um, was very biased in the positive or negative of certain words, um, that you would use that wasn't the general understanding of the positive or negative characteristics of those words to a general English speaker, then the sentiment that it might give you back might be very, very different than you would expect. And depending on what was said, it might introduce a bias into the results that you were getting that would mean that your tool was doing something very unintended and, and possibly very negative for your business. So as AI becomes more of part of our business solutions, the more issues like this are likely to come up and the more relevant it is to, to think about these issues, which are part of Microsoft's responsible AI standards, which are an important part of using the Microsoft AI tools. So hopefully this video has been useful to you to learn a little bit about AI Builder and how you can start to use it either in your apps or your flows in Power Automate. Um, I hope to be touching on these topics a little bit more in the coming months um, as this continues to be a relevant topic um, that is in the news a lot uh, as people want to play around with different AI solutions that are out there. So hopefully this has been useful to you. If it has, then please give the video a like. Um, if you enjoy content like this, then please do subscribe to the channel. And until next time, bye-bye.